Welcome to my show. My name is Marcel Johnson, and this is The Freedom Experience. Everybody like be surprised that I be freestyling behind the scenes. You know, For what I'm real? yeah, I be having fun. This is what I do. You know what I'm saying? I like but that. listen, man, thank y'all first of all for tuning in. What's going on, family? So y'all don't even know this. Well, some of y'all really do. Asia and my brother Nolan and somebody, some people who are so important to me. You know what I mean? They're winners of Global Transformation. That's the organization that you know what I mean uplifts entrepreneurs. But today's show is really about her. <laughs> so we're stripping away the business. We're going to shout it out. But I want this interview. I want y'all to really just, you know what I'm saying, tap in and get to know her. But I ask that you like, comment, subscribe, and just, you know what I'm saying, kick back, go grab a snack, chill out. You know, we're about to get into it. Yes. But I wanted to uh, give you the right title. So her name is Asia Cook. Mm -hmm. She's founder, owner, operator mm -hmm. of Culinary Management, mm -hmm. Cook's Culinary Management, yep. and Cook's Catering. Yes. So she has a culinary management uh, organization and a cook's catering like business organization yes. and she do a ton of things in the city of Pittsburgh for all the school systems you're providing school lunches you're like doing so much stuff that I'd be like how do you be having time to do that mm -hmm. and be a wife a mom like an influencer now she's a social influencer mm -hmm. her Instagram TikTok, like everything is just blowing up man I'm so proud of you thank you yeah thank you so much I'm serious about that too thank you so so much I how, really do you, appreciate how, how, genuine. Do you, how do you balance that uh, I balance it through trial and error. Ooh. Like, you know, I just pretty much do what makes sense at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, because it, it, what I've learned over time is that I kind of put everything into percentages. Okay. Like, if I give 50% of myself to here, okay. I can give 40% of myself to here. I, I break everything down into numbers almost. That's how my mind works. Um, but I, it's, it's all about trial and error. What works mm -hmm. best at the time? If I know that I'm feeling led to put a lot of my energy into like my calling, which is like yeah. through my ministry, then I know I might have to sacrifice a little bit of time somewhere else. Um, so I just do it through trial and error, whatever's going to bring me peace in that time. Do you think like you're an overthinker? Oh. Because a lot of people like, you know what I'm saying? I'll do that too where I'm over, uh -huh. but I can tell you might deal with overthinking. I do. Yeah. I do. I deal with overthinking, um, but it's something that I'm intentionally seeking God to fix. Come on. Because he, because my calling cannot uh, wait around for me to be thinking all the time. You know yeah. what I mean? I can't sit and wait for me to get my thoughts together to keep going. And I know that sometimes if we allow our thoughts to overtake us, it'll, what we were talking about, debilitate us. It will stop us. It'll distract us. It'll hold us back. So... I've been very intentional now that I am um, gave myself wholly to my calling. Yeah. I've been very intentional about making sure that my thoughts don't overpower me. You know what's so crazy about that is sometimes people utilize, the enemy will utilize your overthinking this and he'll cause you to overthink so much that you don't even move. Yes. So many people are sitting on dreams, visions, yeah. thoughts. And it's like all you're doing is thinking about it and it's debilitating you and stopping you from moving forward. Mm -hmm. So I love the fact you said you just keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Even when you're overthinking, it's like just get up and keep going. <clears throat> so I wanted to ask you, where did you grow up? Oh, wow. So I was originally born okay. in Mobile, Alabama. What? Yes. How do we not know that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like we never don't knew. Know that unless wow. they have a conversation with me. So I was born in Mobile, Alabama. Okay. Uh, a great deal of my family is in the South. Wow. My father, my whole side of my father's family is in Atlanta, Georgia. Wow. So I have um, like five or six siblings on my dad's side. Yeah. My grandparents, all of they live in Georgia. My grandfather, my other, my my other grandfather and my grandmother, their um, family is in Alabama. Okay. Between Mobile, Montgomery. <laughs> All of that. Yeah. Um, when my mom transitioned us to Pittsburgh, I grew up in Garfield. Garfield. So you're yeah. from Garfield. So yeah. Pittsburgh, Garfield. Okay. Yeah. 
But I remember you lived in Atlanta. Like, you were living in Atlanta for some time, right? Well, I lived in, not in Atlanta, I lived in Mobile for some time. Okay. Yeah, so um, my siblings were born in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia. I was going to ask you, how many siblings do you have, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I have, I have on my mom's side, I have an older sister and an older brother. I'm the baby. Okay. <laughs> and then on my dad's side, I, I really, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure I have like five sisters and one brother. Wow. Or two brothers. So you're surrounded. Yeah. Now I'm not. Um, I don't have like a a, a fluent relationship with the okay. my siblings on my dad's side. Right. But my siblings on my mom, uh, my mom's side. Yes. Yes. Wow. I, I was surrounded by them growing up. We had our. We were like a tight knit little family right that's, here. That's crazy because whenever you're in a large family, there's beneficial things, but you know everything has pros and cons. Yeah. But in a large family, you can often feel unseen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes whenever you deal with traumas or you deal with issues, they're like not as important because you're not the primary focus. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you dealing with traumas and you having issues as a kid, what was that like kind of? Did you ever feel not seen? It's not that I didn't feel seen because I feel like as a child, and this is something that I'm learning now. Right. Now that we're adults yep. and we're transitioning into being the caretakers, I'm learning now there were so many things that we endured as children that we viewed as being normal. What? And it was just a part of growing up. Yo. That now as an adult, we're, we're some of those thoughts, we, I sit and I think about some of the things as a child that I witnessed, endured, went yep. through, and I'm like, ugh. Yeah, like, like that was not regular, that, bro. That was it trauma. Wasn't regu and I would never want that for my own child. Mm. But to us back then, some of it was fun. Some yep. of it was exciting. Yeah. Some of it was, so. Um, True. Not, so navigating through trauma as a child for mm -hmm. me with, I only grew up in the household with my brother and my sister. Right. So it was me, my mom, my brother, and my sister. That's pretty much the gist of it. And my grandparents stayed in Alabama. They would come back and forth and we would go with them every summer. Okay, that's lit. So, it wasn't that I felt um, unseen, yeah. but I just kind of played my role because my mom was a single mom and she worked enough jobs to make sure that she could provide for us. So I just never gave her more of a hassle. So you were the baby out of you, your brother, your sister. Mm -hmm. So you kind of was only three y'all. So I mean, sometimes you can get lost in that, but you kind of was seen because you're the baby. Like I'm the baby too. So I kind of feel like we do get seen. We the do. baby gets seen. Get so more, yeah, so exactly. <laughs> we get seen a little bit more. But were you ever like bullied or were you ever like a bully? How did you navigate bullying as a kid? Oh, that's, I, that's tricky. I was bullied. Okay. As a kid, I feel like I was bullied by, not really by my sibling. Mm -hmm. Um, me and my brother have a different type of connection to where it's now as an adult, I can see, you know, where there may be some issues in our connection. Yeah. Um, me and my sister have a different type of connection where we just, we're just sisters, like that yeah. sisterly love type. I love that. My siblings didn't really bully me, yeah. but in the out, outer realm, like in school, I'm, I'm someone who gives everybody the benefit of the doubt. Okay. So it's, I'm an easy target. I'm an empath. Mm. People, call, people call it an empath. Wow. Were you quiet? No. For real? I wasn't bad, but I, was, I wasn't quiet. Because when I think about you, I see you, like, you could have got bullied, but it seemed like you would have just got along with everybody. I did. I, yeah. I did for sure get along with everybody, but the bullying came from the fact that I don't see, I don't naturally see bad in people. Wow. So, yeah. like, if somebody came up to, I remember this one instance, I was in middle school, and I had on these the jelly shoes. My mom yeah. got me the jelly shoes. That's I'm back in the red. day. You back got me. In the yeah, day. you got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them clear okay. jelly shoes. Yeah, so you was probably lit. I, I was, and I wore them to school, and I was so excited. And right. there was this girl. She was like, "Oh, um, I like your shoes," but yeah. she was just like, she said something to me, and I remember being like, "Oh, thank you." But then come to find out, she was actually wow. making fun of me. Wow. But it's just the fact that I don't, I don't. My you first blinded of people, by yeah, it. Yeah, like I don't see wow. bad in people when I first come across them. I see wow. good. So it takes a moment for me to register like, oh, that was actually hate. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. I'm learning too as a life coach that so many people, they end up getting friend groups. You're surrounded with friends who are always giving you backhanded compliments mm -hmm. and you're not even thinking that it's a, a bad thing, but that's actually like abuse and bullying. It is abuse. And you're getting abused by your friend group. Abuse. So if your friends are always insulting you or saying little smart slash stuff yes. and then being like, I'm playing with you, that's abuse. 100% abuse. So do you recommend for them to come out of those type of dynamics and build healthier relationships? So it's so funny that you say this because on my social media, um, a lot of my content has been focused wow. on like building healthy relationships, healthy relationship within your marriage, mm. healthy relationship within your friendships, healthy yep. relationship uh, within your calling and your purpose, wow. within yourself. Because we often neglect 
our Ourself. relationship with ourselves. Isn't that crazy. Yeah. So um, what I would recommend is is first of all knowing uh, the triggers and of yourself mm. and knowing, well, not even knowing, paying attention to how people handle you. Mm. Sometimes we sometimes we don't we don't really say too much about, about how people handle us right. because we depend on how other people handle us for us to determine how we handle ourselves. Validation. Right. Wow, and so rejection. Like, if 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 I'm somebody who I put on an outfit and right. when I put on this outfit I'm like, "Ugh, I don't like this. This yeah. is this makes me look like this and this makes oh my face." Yeah. I'm not going to care if my friend is like, "Ooh, girl, your face." Yeah. I'm not going to care because you that's how did I it to talk yourself. to myself. Wow. But it takes but changing how you talk to yourself. On the flip side, if I built myself up and then I go outside and you're saying negative things to me, it kind of like identifies the enemy. Yeah. Now it's like, "Oh, it's you're a, trying it, to You can see it better. Wow. So self-love, self-care, mm -hmm. self-affirmation plays a huge role in building your self-identity and confidence. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. I had to learn that for myself in my adult year. I love that. Mm -hmm. So I know that you're married yes. and I know that you also like have relationships with brothers, sisters, mom, dad, everything. But how would you identify a toxic relationship versus a healthy relationship? That is so good. And this is like really on point with like my niche. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of identifying a toxic relationship versus a healthy relationship. I always like to say, what are the fruits that are being produced in a relationship? Mm. So sometimes you have to sit back and you have to take a look at what's being produced. How is this relationship making me feel about myself? Wow. And how is this relationship making this other person feel? Like, what is it doing for this other person? So if you're in a relationship with someone, and let's just say, I'm just going to say a friendship, because we yeah. talk about um, intimate relationships all the time. But let's go friends. Let's go friends for yeah. a minute. If you're in a relationship with a friend and you notice that, Every time you're around this person, there's a part of you that you know you have to kind of turn off mm, or you downplay. You, you downplay, you don't say certain things. Or let's just say you come out of this whole spirit of wanting to gossip mm -hmm. because you're starting, whatever the Holy Spirit did within you, yep. you start to discern and you feel convicted and you're like, oh my goodness, I don't really want to gossip anymore, right? right? But then when you're around friends, you recognize that that's something that was in your nature. Like that's something that you guys did. So those are things that you can start to feel and determine, okay, this isn't healthy for the, the mm. place in which I'm going. Right. It might have been healthy for you at the time in, in your own mind. Ooh. But when you start to grow in certain ways, you can, you, you'll you be able to feel when something is no longer serving you in a healthy manner. And you know what's crazy? That is so true. I love the fact that you use that example. And that what's coming to me is even like friends, when you stop drinking, when you mm -hmm. stop smoking, mm -hmm. and it's just like they, whenever you're around them, they're trying to pull you back into that world. And it's just like, it's not serving me because I'm trying to be free. And I love the fact you said maybe in a last season, it served you. Yeah. Maybe drinking was like a coping mechanism in your last season, mm -hmm. but now you're trying to be like, you know what, I don't want to drink to cope. So identifying that, and it doesn't even have to be a bad person. No. Let's talk about that. Some no. people are really good friends outside of the way that they treat you, right? Yeah. Like they might uh, treat you nice, but then like they're just not where they're supposed to be. Yeah. How would you navigate that relationship? So it's, it's tricky because you're right. Everybody's right. not a bad person. Exactly. They, and they are... They are serving you in some way, shape, or form right. during the season of that relationship, mm. right? But then as you start to grow and learn yourself and you start to turn yourself over to your wow. creator, you're yep. going to start to learn different things about yourself. Yes. And when you, when you, when you go into relationship and you evolve, because that's a promise. We have to evolve. That's it. It's promise. So yep. when we go and we talk to God and we say, um, no, we talk to our friend, I'm sorry, and say, hey, I'm noticing this is something that I just I need to I need to break free of this. Like I want yeah. I want to give this up. Yep. Or let's just say we don't say it like that. It's just like man, I really don't want to talk to such and such anymore. Every yep. time I talk to him, he makes me feel like a bad crap. dude, like a dude like, that's just, just yeah. I just like I don't want to keep going into this relationship. He's like, abusive, it's just, it's toxic. A, yeah, and and that friend, when you know that you have something good, and you know that you're in alignment yep. with your friend. Yes. The friend recognizes that whatever whatever's going on is causing you pain. Yes. And they want you to be out of it just as badly as you mm. do. But there are some people, and this is where it gets tricky, and it's not that a person is a bad person, you just outgrow them. <sighs> is because if that friend is also battling with the same spirit, come on. Naturally, if you're the one that's trying to pull you guys out of it, yep. but that person is still in bondage, yep. they're going to want to keep you in, in it. Bond wow, They're going to want to keep you in bondage. So we have to recognize first bondages. Right. 
recognize when when it's time to, to be set free from those that deliverance we talked mm -hmm. about. And then we have to recognize actually walking away from it, even if that means leaving somebody behind. Listen, that can be so hard because sometimes the person holding you captive is your mom. It's your mm. dad. It's your baby's mom. Somebody you love it's your a lot. husband. It's somebody who you're in a certain covenant with, but yes. yet they're still holding you back. Yes. And you have to learn how to navigate and still love them where they're at, but then still be willing to move on. And That's trust that beautiful. God and trust that God will will bring it back together if it's supposed to be brought back together. Yep. That's another thing. Sometimes like the like let's think about um the story of Abram, um, Isaac, Jacob. Um, yeah, but, this is biblical stuff for y'all. Yeah, this is, um, let's think about Sarai and Abram. Yeah. When when God said he gave them the promise of their son, right? But right. then they did their own thing with Hagar and came up with Ishmael, yep. right? And then when it was time to separate from them, when Sarai was like, hey, this is what needs to happen, this, you know, do you remember the conversation that God had with Abram? He said, right. basically in, in, in layman's terms, he said, just because you're not going to be with them don't mean that they won't be good. Right, like they could go to separate ways and still be blessed. But still be blessed. But we mm. think our presence, because of how we feel about God and we know our relationship with God, right. that our presence means that, that that person is covered just because we're there. Ooh, and it's almost like you're inserting yourself to be an idol in somebody's yes. life. When really it's like, you need God, you no longer need me. And so you have to be yeah. willing to let people go let and let go. God develop them yes. and get them built up without them coming to you. I love that. Mm -hmm. So I also I want to shift gears a little bit and I want to talk about <laughs> your marriage yes. because you're married. Right. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk about single Asia life yeah, okay. before marriage. Yes, Let's I get into that. that life before marriage, life before marriage. Like yeah. where were you at mentally? Even because I know you've grown so much yes. and I know you're almost like a different person mm -hmm. from being single. And a lot of us, we experience that when we get married. But what was single life for you? Because some people are still single where you're at, where you were at before. So single life for me, um, I already had the foundation of God in my life. Period. But I'm just going to be candid in like who I was. Yeah. I, I, I pretty much, I, I didn't care about much of anything. Yeah. Before Christ, um, before marriage. Wow. Because I, I say before Christ only because when I became a married woman is when I started to see God more. So I kind of right. put them together. But... When I was a single woman, I didn't care much about anything. I um, I was pursuing my dance career. Yep. I was I oh, was working yes. in VIP for yep. for um, some of the best places in our city. Um, I was working in bottle service, so I was managing bottle service. I was an it girl. Yeah. Like I would consider myself an it girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? I you were um, on the scene. Yeah, I was definitely bopping around. Yep. At, um, and I just was someone who. I cared about raising my daughter at the time because I had yeah. my daughter when I was 16. Okay. So um, at the time when I had my daughter, I just was focusing on raising her, yep. trying to take care of her. Yep. I was still very young. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to go to college. I went to college. I went to uh, college for about two months, and then I dropped out. Okay. Like a, like a lot of people. But yeah. Go ahead. I dropped out, and I, I wanted to focus 100% on working. Period. I felt like it was more important for me to work so I could provide for my for my daughter. That makes sense. Um. And so my when I got into this this mode of working and then I realized how my looks benefit me. Come on. I just went into it. Like I just gave myself completely to just look. So can we freedom. talk about that? Like girls who are pretty and they utilize their looks to either seduce men to get money and everything. And a lot of times we judge them. Mm -hmm. We'll judge them and we'll call them all these names, but like their looks and that that uh that 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 gift is benefiting them. I take advantage of what is taking it. People take advantage of people all the time. Come so on. I just what took you say? You taking advantage of me? I'm taking <laughs> you advantage. You know what I mean? So I just yeah. I know, I know I that do. you were a great dancer. You background dance for like T Pain for Tiana Taylor. Who? What else? So I didn't do T Pain, but he was always a dream of mine. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. But I, I, at the height of my career, uh -huh. I, I was on the last thing I did before I uh, stepped away was I danced background for Tiana Taylor, which was amazing. Listen, man, Love that's what T. I'm saying. Like you. <laughs> I love the fact that you were literally pursuing a career and you were willing to make adjustments and the shift into what God had for you. Because sometimes what you're doing isn't a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's just not a God thing. Yeah, that part. Because a lot of who I am now is still, uh, I still have a lot of the same characteristics. Yeah. I'm just using them differently. Come on. Like. I love that. The mindset that I have in my, my business, in yeah. my marriage, in my friendships, especially, um, let me speak specifically to business. The mindset that I have in business, I had the same mindset when I was making so much money in a club. Yep. 
but I was just using it in a different way. I was going to say, you was going to be a stripper at a time. I thought about it. So she was thinking about being a stripper, y'all. So, But I love that because it just shows how you were in a space and in a certain mindset, and it's just like a real person. Everybody yeah. sees you, and they think that, you know what I'm saying, you didn't have these real-life experiences. I did. What made you say no to stripping? You know what? It's so funny. Um, I considered it because dancing... I dance well. So close to each other. I know I can make good money. Yep. And the the way in which I dance, like my, um, I'm a professional dancer. I, I was trained ballet, jazz, modern, tap, wow. hip hop, everything, wow. African. You dance, dance. I mean, I've danced with da some of the best dancers in Pittsburgh. It's it was a thing for me. It was yeah. literally my career path, and I knew at the time I could make easy money. Yeah. Doing it that way. And I was all ready to do it. It was like an amateur night. Um, wow. And I was all ready to do it, me and my, my friend. Okay. We were going to do it together. Okay. And I was like, you know what? Whatever. Like, I'm just going yeah, I'm I'm to do it. I'm, I'm in just, here. Yeah. Let's do it. I'm just going to get into it. Yep. And this is like TMI, but a lady thing happened. And when yep. that, that literally, I don't know where the, wow. the lady thing happened. I came on. Like God was and like. And I was like, oh, I'm not doing it like this. And that's wow. only that's that's literally, literally what stopped me. Yo. And I was like, I'm not doing it like this. My friend still did it. Talk about the hand of God, though. He's so strategic. So strategic, cause it it was it wasn't meant for me to actually go through with it. Right. I'm but not you... ashamed of the fact that I thought about it. I considered it. I even I mean I I had my outfit figured out. I had everything, but that was the one thing in that moment that I was like, I will absolutely not do it like this. I think the reason why God allowed for you to get that far is because you aren't able to judge anybody who's in any type of sex industry, dance mm -hmm. industry, and it allowed for you to relate to them in a way where you didn't have to go as far as they went to have an understanding of them. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, I understand you because her ministry is big. She reaches millions of women all around the world. Her videos are viral and they continue to spiral. You feel me? <laughs> but I feel like she's able to reach them and be like, look, I know that. And I not did. just from just what I studied or heard. I actually was in that spot. Even though I didn't go as far as it, I still can relate. Yeah, and there's there's, there's a lot of things that I've done I that I'm, I'm excited for God to um, unveil them as he has me moving through different through different stages of my ministry. Yeah. I'm excited for him, for him to unveil them. And they're going to be heavy for some people. Yeah. You know, because we're in this culture where we think uh, Christianity and we think loving God and we think uh, yep. being an ambassador for God looks a certain way. Period. Like and perfection. It, yeah, like and it doesn't. And it's not. It's not. It's not it's at all. Real. It's real. It's, it's so not that there are times when I'm talking to God and I'm like, why ah, me? Mm. Like me? Wow. Mm. Me. Me. And this is what God, <laughs> and look, and this is what God say back to her. Why not Why you? Why not you? Why not you? You're perfect you? for the job. Perfect. Because I know you love me. Mm. And I know that you know what I what I saved you from. Mm. And I know you're not fearful to walk in boldness to save other people from the same thing. And I know that when people do come across you, they're going to feel the similarities. They're going to see themselves in you. Come on. I know that. Yes. And yeah, so for sure. I mean, it's something I definitely considered. And then even when I was in the dance industry, my yeah. whole like niche yeah. in the dance industry was very sultry, very sexy, very, yeah. you know, that was my thing. Yeah. I know a lot of people, hip hop, some people like. Oh, you were in like that was, that was okay. My, so like when that I was sense. like, think about Tiana Taylor and think about her set. If you've ever seen her yep. perform, it's very yep. sexual. It's very, yeah. but it's, it's like bomb. It's like the dancers, the background dancers that's more leaning into like the sexy type yeah. of uh, choreography. Yes. Than like the hip hop, like very punk heels, and, heels, yeah. minimal clothing. The very heels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all I danced in was heels. Yeah, wow. Even if I went to a hip hop class. Yo. Heels me all day. See, they don't really know this version of you. No, but yeah, and it's like they're don't. this is the girl that like they relate to yeah. because it's like you're real. You know what I'm saying? So I want to play a game with you. It's called word recognition. Ah, okay. So on this game, I'm gonna give you the inspo, you know what I'm saying, addition. Sometimes people sing, some people do different stuff. Mm -hmm. But on this uh game, what I want you to do is I'm gonna give you a name, I'm gonna give you a word, and you're going to inspire the people at home mm -hmm. utilizing a word. You ready? Ooh, I like do I want me to talk to this one or that one? Which one should she talk to? Either okay. one I got. You pick and choose. You got it, He's you got telling it. us whatever. Okay. Healthy marriage. Ooh, healthy marriage. Healthy marriage starts with two people understanding that you 
don't come into a marriage fixing each other. Mm. You're both broken. You you both have things that you have to overcome. You both have things that you have to get through, right? Wow. So it come it, it, when you come into a marriage in order to maintain the healthiness of it. First of all, appreciate God's creation of marriage. Mm. Sometimes we get into marriage just because we think we're supposed to be married. It's, or it's clout. Yeah, but in order for it to be healthy, we first have to appreciate the design of it. Mm. We have to understand that the role we play in it, and we have to just play our roles despite how painful it is sometimes. Wow. So a healthy marriage doesn't come from happiness. A healthy marriage comes from obedience. Oh, a sacrifice. Sacrifice. But what's, what's greater than sacrifice? Mm. Obedience. It's hard being obedient oh, yeah. when you're being abused. Yeah. Ooh. It's hard being obedient when your spouse doesn't even like you. When do you think is grounds for divorce? Like if a woman's married right now, she's getting cheated on, she's That's getting beat, question. she's being tortured, everything. When do you feel like it's okay to walk away? Man, this is a heavy question, but it's a great question because a lot of the women who um, reach out to me. Yep. That's where they're it's at. Like that. See, look at God, man. It's like that. It's like See? when is enough enough? Wow. And what I would say to that is, and this is this is what I give to women. I give scriptures depending on where they're at in the season. Yeah. But if you're, God doesn't call for you to be abused. Let me make that very clear. Mm. Nobody's supposed to be abusing you. Nobody is supposed to be. And, and abuse is just not knocking you upside your head. It's not just physical. It's mental. It's emotional. Wow. It's not just someone physically putting their hands on you. It's a, there's a mental abuse that can make you feel like you just want to die. Mm. Like, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. There's emotional abuse that every single time that you express emotions to your spouse, their emotions overpower yours. The children's emotions overpower yours. So every time you go to experience your own vulnerability and emotions, it's robbed of you. It's snatched up real quick. Wow. Where you kind of go crazy mentally. Can, I can't even sit here and cry to my wow. husband because the moment that I cry to him, he's going to become so enraged mm. that now my tears mean nothing. Wow. So I want to first make it very clear that abuse in your marriage should not be happening. But if it is, mm -hmm. know that God still is within your marriage. Mm -hmm. Know that your obedience is what's keeping your marriage together. Mm -hmm. Know that God is not a respecter of persons and the instruction that he has given to us will help us so that when we come face to face with him, he can say, well done. Because there are things that we think that we should do just because of what we're experiencing. But in reality, we have to still maintain what God says to do. Yeah. Um, now, as far as divorce, right. now I give this to, I'm going to speak specifically to women. Because there's a verse in 1 okay. Corinthians 7 that says, um, there's a verse in 1 Corinthians 7. And it starts at 7, 9, all the way to, I think, 15, that says, if a woman does depart from her husband. Right to remain unmarried right. or to reconcile with her husband. Right. God understands that there's times where you need to walk away. He understands that there's Period. times where, where he's going to call you to peace. And he right. understands how cold men's heart are. Mm. And can get. And can get, which yep. was why he granted Moses uh, the, uh, the ability to even create the law of divorce. Div and get the certificate and move on. And sometimes I feel like... Yeah. You can't be fearful to move on because a lot of times you get into these marriages that God never put you in. People say, well, God put together, let no man separate. But sometimes God didn't put you together. You put yourself in it. And then now you need God in order to deliver you out of it. And I think a lot of times, but you know what I'm saying? But I don't think the delivering is just divorce, divorce is it? Yeah. No, divorce isn't because truthfully, mm -hmm. marriage is really to help kill your flesh and get you to be more like Christ. Mm -hmm. So I don't, image. yeah, so I don't feel like divorce is like the answer or the first answer, but a lot of times people are scared to get divorced because of God, but it's just like, I think you have to go to God and get that personal reassurance from him on what it is you can really do. Because each situation yeah. is different. Yeah, each situation is different. And you also have to understand that if divorce is the path in which you and your spouse go, it's okay. Come on. It's still okay. love. You're yes. still loved. You yes. still have salvation. You, st yes. you know what I mean? Talk to you, him. you loving God and you accepting the uh, Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, yep. you receive that salvation. It's done. Come on. That's done. So what you're experiencing in your marriage, if it gets to the point where you do divorce, yep. understand that your salvation is not going with that divorce. Mm. Period. And that's Mic what's drop. most important. My <laughs> drop. So it's like you're still going to heaven despite your divorce. Period. So my last word, so I want you to uh, say this for so real fast, vulnerability. Ooh. Just real quick, what would you tell somebody at home who maybe struggles with it, who needs to break through to that other side? Vulnerability can come when you're your safest. 
So mm -hmm. if you're currently in a, a, a relationship, a friendship, wherever you're in, where you're, you're, you're not in a place, there's nothing around you that cultivates an atmosphere where you can be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You need to move. You need to, wow. and I don't even mean you need to physically get mm -hmm. up and move all your stuff and leave. No, you need to go find an atmosphere where you can be vulnerable so that, so that the enemy is not just playing in your head all day. Yep. No, you need to go find someone who has the time, the resources, the spirit, the emotional capacity to go ahead and let you pour out. Vulnerability is, is imperative in your growth. Vulnerability is imperative in your understanding yourself. Vulnerability is imperative wow. in you loving yourself because you should be vulnerable. Wow. You should be able to be vulnerable. And I think vulnerability leads you to freedom and it leads you to the other side. Because like before you even say you have a problem, you have to be willing to be vulnerable to say like, this, this is, is a what problem. It is. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes like she said, you don't have an atmosphere. You don't have a group yeah. of friends. You don't have anybody you can be vulnerable with. So I would really encourage you to get around people where you feel safe enough to be vulnerable. You and that's especially if you don't currently have the trust and the faith in God and the relationship yeah. and the conversation with God and the conversation with the Holy Spirit in Come which on. you can you can release your vulnerability with Christ. Like All for the time, me, Jesus, yep. My prayer closet. Oh, I'm in there. Vulnerable. Vulnerable. Transparent. It's not. <laughs> 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 Everything like, like pouring it all pour out. It out. And, yeah. and, but before I was able to really tap into <laughs> to that yeah. relationship and being yep. vulnerable in that relationship, I found it in friendships. Perry, so there's levels to this. Mm -hmm. So there's levels to vulnerability. Just be patient with yourself. Okay, I wanted to ask you, man, how does it feel that you're reaching all these people, thousands of people, <laughs> or like in your DMs, they're reaching out to you? I don't probably see this interview. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How do you feel about that? And what are you going to say to them? That's and like, good. you know what I'm saying? How do you feel about reaching all these people? This is new for you. Yeah, it's, it's new yeah. to me. Um, I'm not used, I'm, I was already used to uh, performing. Like, okay. you got to think, like, as a performer, it was nothing for me to get on a stage and perform in front of thousands of people yep. and be whoever I wanted to be. Yes. But when you're showing up as yourself, different. It's different. It mm. hits way different. Wow. And I go into like my social media engagement and I see that I've reached people in different countries, yep. the UK, That's what I'm different religions, yep. different everything. And it, it excites me. It <laughs> makes me very excited and it makes me nervous at the same time because it's a great responsibility. Like I feel like you're stewarding it well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's a great responsibility. And um, I just know it, behind closed doors, the relationship I have with God yeah. is like, it's the only thing that's allowing me to maintain it in the way in which I am because wow. I know it wasn't nothing that I did to create this. You yeah. know what I mean? But I'm excited for it. I'm on fire about it because <laughs> I know all that I, the crushing that I that I, I went through to get to this place. Listen. And I'm excited to break other people free. Let, so that's that excitement. Like I'm like, man, what? After what I went through and the devil was really trying to take me out of here? Yep. You really wanted me to kill myself. Ooh. You really wanted me to not feel like Speak I had any purpose. It. You Speak really wanted it. me to feel like I was this valueless person. You really wanted me to feel like my marriage was in bondage and it would never change. Mm, that's what you really wanted, no. but I overcame that through the blood of God, through God's word. Come on, so Jesus. So now when you have that fire, yep. Yeah, you want to go and get other people. Other. It's like, man, because because there are some people when I speak with them, their situation is so heightened because they're experiencing it every day, right. and it's all that they can think about. It's bombarding them. It man. bombards them. Yeah. But but we don't get to see people overcoming. <sighs> so I feel like where God has me at, He wants people to see what the overcoming looks like. looks like. Not that I'm mm. not going to go through it again. No. Not that me and my husband are not going to go back and forth. We're going to have disagreements. Right. That's not that, That's not what that means. It doesn't mean that pain will stop. Right. It just means that the overcoming, it heightens Christ and not the problem. You know what's coming to my mind? Second Peter, where God talks about you're a holy generation, mm -hmm. a chosen priesthood, mm -hmm. called and declared to come out to be an uh, ambassador, to be a, represent a representative of the one who called you out of darkness mm -hmm. into his wonderful light. And I think what Good you time. do is you walk around and you show people what it looks like to come out of darkness into God's light. And then I think that people are able to follow you. So disclaimer, behind the scenes, we pray, we talk, Ooh. you know what I'm saying? We had a whole little situation. And I told her, man, like God is calling you to be a trailblazer. There's like a fire precedes you, fire comes behind you and you are lighting a path for so many people. So many women will 
found Christ because of you. So many women will break out of toxic relationships, get into new ones because of you. And I think that you steward that position. Bro she's like it's like it's like a graceful brokenness. Yeah. You have to stay broken in order to stay hum humble and hungry for God. Yeah. And then what happens is you glow. Mm -hmm. You're on fire for him. And that causes your heart to be genuine and then you're reaching all these people. And you're doing it so perfectly. You know what that just made me think about? What's up? How do you get a glow stick to glow? Break it. You gotta, you gotta crack. break it. Ooh, that's crazy. <laughs> you gotta Wow, it. bro. Shake that thing up. Yeah, it got to be shaking, broken. And then it glows. So it looks easy because she get online, she looks perfect, she, everything looks good. But meanwhile, they don't even know you had to go through prayer, you had to be broken, you had to go through things to get there. Yes. So yes. if somebody wanted to be like, you know, I feel like God's calling me to present my life in a way that you're doing, what would you encourage them and say? Um, well, this is going to be kind of cliche, but I would yep. encourage... You to, because most people, we we don't know how to love ourselves. Mm, this is it. We think it's that love. love only means loving other people. Now, God commands us to love one another. Right. A hundred percent. Right. But we still have to love ourselves. We still have to understand that oh, we're God. important. And in order for us to actually, like, pour into people, and in order for us to, you ever you ever be having like a bad day yeah. or just a lot going on in your day and somebody happens to call you yep. and they want advice yep. and you give it to them yep. it's like and you your brokenness. Could have gave that to yourself, but yep. You give it to them in your brokenness, oh, you're going to give it every time. But the mm. reason that I'm saying the, the loving yourself part part is important because if you if you make up your identity with your brokenness and the things that you go through, mm. then every single time you experience something, it's going to stop you from helping other people. Wow. When in reality, you should really, you should be so grounded in who you are and so yep. grounded in who God has called you to be. Yep. Then no matter what's going on around you, you can still keep pursuing. Like that. you can see, yeah, you can still keep going through. So that's just my advice because for me personally, and I know this is going to speak to whoever, whomever is supposed to hear it. What really set me off in my ministry yeah. was me getting back to loving me. I was so in love with my husband. Wow. I was so in love with my children. Wow. I was so in love with building our business. I was so in love with all these things that I neglected myself. Wow, yo. And he actually, God is so divine. Mm -hmm. He's so divine. He brought a childhood friend who I was friends with um, in middle school Yeah. back into my life and my adulthood I last year. And this friend was patient with me. Yep. She she encouraged me. She loved me. She she didn't let me she didn't let me neglect myself. Like when I first yeah. started going to the gym, I used to be like, yeah, I'm trying to get in shape. You know, I want to look yeah. good for my husband. She said, what about you? Oh, come on. You don't want to look good for you? What? But I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. Yup. I was doing that all the time. But when I when I understood that uh, selfishness doesn't equate to like loving yourself. Right. Then that broke me free. I had to be broken free from that first. So my advice is to figure out where you're figure out where you're you're broken at. That listen, that's so that's like monumental advice. Because I think we're raised and trained, especially when you're of God, to think anytime you're thinking about yourself, you're being selfish, mm -hmm. you're being prideful, you're not being selfless. And I think that when the Bible says God says love people the way that you love yourself, mm -hmm. he really means like you do. And we do skip over the self part to love other people. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy you're saying this because God has me in a season, transparent moment, where he's causing me to love on myself. And the way he's doing that is, whether it's a face mask, right? But the most, I'm an intellectual person, so he's causing me to have uh, positive thoughts about myself. He's yeah. like, you need to love yourself through your thought life. So he's mm -hmm. having me check every single thought that comes into my mind, especially about myself. We'll dismiss thoughts about ourselves like something negative, mm -hmm. and we won't even say, I rebuke it, I banned it. But other people, when you have a negative judgmental thought, you'll stop it, put it away. Mm -hmm. But about yourself, you'll just let it resonate. Yeah. God's like, you need mm -hmm. to ban and stop even the thoughts that you have negative about mm -hmm. yourself because it's not coming from me. It's not. That's the half about you. And so at the end of the day, I'm working on myself too, and I think we're all working on ourselves. This is what it's about. This is why God creates the freedom experience because it's like there's no ultimate level of freedom until you get into heaven next to God. Mm -hmm. Other and not you're going from glory to glory mm -hmm. and you're experiencing new and different levels of freedom so that you could have a platform like my sister like myself mm -hmm. and then share with other people yeah. so i wanted to play this last game with you and then we're done it's called rapid response okay you ready yep. so what i'm going to do is 
I'm going to ask you questions, wrap it, and you got to give a rapid, quick response. You okay. ready? Okay. So, in this situation, if you could ask God one question, what would it be? Am I supposed to be a pastor? Mmm. Dang. Oh, okay. I would ask him that. Because I, I just want to hear him say it. Okay. Okay. To me, honestly, I feel like you're already a pastor. I do too. I think that you don't need man's approval or a man's title to have it. I think the the think actions, the actions that you already pursue and the actions that you already present to the world is very pastoral. And I think that you already have sheep and you're like a shepherd over your ministry. And I think that it's like you're already operating as that. Yeah. Whether you have the title or not. It's Just like that like, Moses complex where it's like, Am I? Am I? <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like you're already caught. You were actually put into the water because of you're the deliverer. Yeah. You already been. It was already written. Right. Right. Ooh. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right. So your favorite movie? Center Stage. What's that? Center Stage is a dance movie. Okay. It's a it's a it's a very old. Um, wow. A very old dance movie, but um, the only person that's in it that you might know is Zoe Zaldana. Is she black or white? The one who plays, she's, she's in the Avatar, Avatar, oh, okay. Col yeah, Colombiana. Yeah, yeah. She's an amazing That's my girl. dancer. She's cute too. Well, she is a dancer dancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like ballet, ballet trained. Yeah. Classically trained. Oh, well, I never knew that she's about amazing. her. She's amazing. That's my movie, Colombiana. She be in there going ham with the Tomb Raider type but bad. She's good. Okay, so are you introvert or extrovert? A bit of both. Mm. In my, in my, in my pre-marriage life, I was an extrovert. Yup. In my Post marriage life, I'm an introvert, but then there are times where I'm a little bit of both. Okay, I think you gotta be based off the business you have. Okay, your favorite song. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, that got me stumped. Come on. Um, favorite song, favorite song, favorite song. You know what? I ain't even gonna hold you. Mm -hmm. I really like Glorilla. Gorilla? Glorilla. <laughs> uh, F R E N. <laughs> not tomorrow uh, too. Be, okay, okay. Not tomorrow too. Get me like. Okay, okay you be in your bag I with that. Condos. <laughs> I like condos. Okay, okay. Yeah, I like. All right. I like a little ratchet. That's a, yeah. That's your your, your favorite song in the season. Okay, so let me ask you this: What is your biggest pet peeve? That is great. I have a few, but um, <laughs> <laughs> one of my biggest pet peeves is um. Somebody who lives two lives. Like, mm. I don't really like being involved or around people who don't yeah. really know who they are. Wow. And they turn, turn their, put faces on depending on what room they're in. Yep. It makes me uncomfortable. Mm. It's a pet peeve for me. So it's almost like the spirit of deception. Yeah. Yeah, I don't Somebody like deception like, either. I don't, I, I don't Ooh, do well with that's that. a good, we gotta, we'll dive deep into that next time. Okay, your favorite feature about yourself? My dimples. All oh, your dimples. She loves the dimples. People be gone off the dimples. Mm -hmm. See, it's crazy because I got one on this side, but on this side I don't got one. But it's crazy. <laughs> hey, I love, I love my, I love my dimples. The dimples. Okay, your biggest mistake. I say, I say my biggest mistake. Um, I, I honestly, well, it's God's timing. Yeah. It's God's timing, but I don't like how long it took me to get to this point. Mm. I don't really care for it. Yeah. And it's something that I, I, I. That's a me problem, though. Yeah. Like, get over yourself. Wow. <laughs> my biggest mistake is taking too long to get to, uh, taking too long to give God my yes. Yeah. Wow. That's I a big like it one. Took me, I feel like it took me, um, because it was a, um, there was a battle and there was a fight that I had to endure. Yep. To get to that point. Yep. And I feel like it took me a little, a little minute to understand the fight that was happening yeah. in the spiritual and not in the natural. But once I once I locked into oh this is happening in the spiritual realm yeah that's where it's I at. put my gloves on and you was ready I was ready See? but it took me a little minute to get there and I feel like a lot of people you don't realize that you're fighting a spiritual warfare battle and when you do then you have to become equipped to even fight it to do it yeah. efficiently to overcome mm -hmm. it so be gentle with yourself and be realize that yourself, yeah. you are not fighting against flesh and blood you are fighting against yes. spiritual wickedness yes. and higher powers mm -hmm. so God is on your side so you'll win. But you got to do like my sister and you got to give them your yes. Mm -hmm. I think you're incredibly young. Mm -hmm. I think you're still young. You're shining. You're beautiful. You're a great wife. You're a great Thank mom. You. And you. I think that you're right on time. That's what I think too. You're right on time. God showed me that, you know, because I was in my head um, uh, like two days ago. Yep. And that's what he told me. He was like, your timing is not my timing. Period. And you're here now and you're on fire now. So, uh, uh, you know, naturally you're going to be like, dang, I could have been here. But. How much further could I be? But God is like, no. Oh. You're right where I want you to be right now. 
So, you know, I like to close the show out with words of wisdom. Okay. So, I want you to tell the people, what is like a mantra? What is your words of wisdom? What would you leave to the people? Hmm. <laughs> what would I leave to you guys? This is pretty good. Um, this is really good, actually. Because what do the people need? Come on. What do they need? You know, you already have God because he's with you. Come on. He's omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. He's everywhere. Right now. He's so powerful that uh, our minds can't grasp. Mm. How powerful God is. Our minds can't even understand it. Can't. So what I what I want to leave you with really is that more than you have a conversation with yourself, more than you have a conversation with other people, don't be afraid to go have conversation with God. He wants to hear from you. He wants you to talk to him. And and conversation with God does not look a certain way. It doesn't sound a certain way. Because if you if you don't know, I'll tell you. The Holy Spirit that lives within you that's sealed sealed in you when you accept the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Holy Spirit actually translates messages to the Father on your behalf because God knows that we don't have the words to express what we're facing sometimes. So I just want to leave you with understanding that God is with you. He wants to hear from you. Come on, He man. wants to talk to you. And, and, and as your conversation grows with him and it becomes more fluent and, it, and it's on a daily basis, it's going to look different. Sometimes it's going to look like it's, it's in your mind. And then it'll start to form words in, uh, in your mouth. And then you'll start to reala realize that when you do talk to God, now you have this sudden urgency to be on your knees. And then after that, you have this sudden urgency to, to just open your Bible. Come on. And when you start to open your Bible, I want to tell you that conversation will go from being one way. He's going to start talking back to you. Come on, Pastor. If you want to hear from God, open your word. Mm. Don't go into your word intimidated of the thee, thou, they's, ought, rots, all of that. Don't go into it like that. Just go into it with the heart of wanting to converse with God. God, I just want to know you. What's the hype? I just mm. want to know you. Mm. I want to understand you. And through this book, we get to really see the personality of Christ. Mm -hmm. We get to see the characteristics of Christ and what he does show to us. And it's amazing. And when you open up that book, he's going to talk back to you. I promise. Love you. Listen, yo. So basically, she said, pray. And then she said, seek God. And mm -hmm. then she said, open up the Bible. And y'all know my words of wisdom. It's always the same thing every show. It's time for our freedom. It's time. Find God. Hey, hey, hey. let's go. <laughs> so look, I wanted to say this too really fast. All of your viewers, they'll probably watch this interview. Is there something that you just want to specifically thank them or say to them? Oh, that's and just, good. You know what I'm saying? And Kurt, like, let's include them too. I just want to thank y'all for... Um for being patient with me. And I want yeah. to just be very open about the fact that I am growing mm -hmm. in Christ and I am still learning and I'm very open and coachable, you know, and I get all of my coaching from, from, from the Lord. You know what I mean? But I just want you guys to know that when you, when you encounter me, I'm sinful. God is perfect. I'm super imperfect. And there may be some times where you encounter me and I hurt you. And there may be some times where you encounter me and I don't say the right thing. But what I believe is that through everything that I do, I don't just do it for me. I do it for the kingdom and I do it for you guys. And the reason that I do it is because I understand that God says that just by planting a seed, he can cause it to increase. And that's why I do it. I do it because God promises. So I just want you guys to know that I'm, I'm super grateful. I love you guys. I'm going to keep putting out content and, oh, this is huge. I just have to say this. Okay. Um, I don't know by the time this airs, but my, my podcast may be out by the time this Come airs. On. So I, I'm working on bringing more content to you guys because making the reels, that 30 seconds that I do that, yeah. it, it, it receives such a great response that I want to be able to, to provide context. That's right. Because... Whenever the Holy Spirit moves me to put out con uh, content, I understand that it triggers people in different kind of ways. Yeah. But I want to create context so that you guys really understand and, and I'm able to edify through the Word of God and help you guys really see, like, God is really on your side. And, and, and what people are putting out in the atmosphere, it doesn't mean that they're, they're speaking from just their perspective. When I speak, I'm speaking from the perspective of the Holy Spirit, what He tells me to put out. So I want to, uh, my podcast is going to be out real soon. Be looking out for it, and I hope you guys tap in so you can just get receive more edification and, and more context. So listen, man, make sure y'all tap into my sister's podcast. Make sure y'all tap into the business. Everything that has to do with her is a blessing. She is anointed. Thank she you. is covered by God. And, man, until next time, we'll see y'all.
Bye. Peace. <laughs> A